Good afternoon, Scott Redley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So day two of this resolution of the consolidation to the upside. You know, we started the year off, um, New Year's Eve, you know, market ignited even though we didn't have the fiscal cliff and everyone was still worrying. And then we gapped up on the first day of the year. And then since then, everyone's been complaining about the lack of volume, complaining that uh, there's no upside. But really what was going on was, you know, three, four, five days of consolidation protecting that gap. We've been talking about the eight day moving average catching up, the 21 day moving average catching up, that if this gap holds during that digestion process, that's when you start buying stocks if you didn't get in there before because it was hard to know exactly what was going to happen going into the new year. But then it gave you a few days to pick out some stocks you wanted to put on your portfolio approach. You know, an approach that we've been pretty much talking about since that November 16th low. And there's been some times when it was a little trickier when we had a little less positions on versus, uh, you know, a lot of positions. But ultimately, using the, the tier system that we talk about, it's been very tradable, very maneuverable. Um, there are some divergences, but nothing's perfect. But overall, you know, the, the, the move to the upside has been pretty strategic. You look here at the chart, you know, obviously retrospect looks a lot easier. Here's that November 16th low. Um, here is your gap up. You know, it's one of our swing traders rules. If you have a gap here, usually continue in the direction of that gap. And that's what we did. Then all of a sudden, pow, you know, we, we pulled back into the, the whole fiscal cliff. This was the week between Christmas and New Year's. And then, you know, New Year's Eve that day, we ignited, even though we didn't have a deal, gapped up. Okay, first day of the year. And then since then, all we did is consolidate, consolidated above this downtrend that was put in place from the 1474 high. You know, or not even downtrend, just you know, a series of, of lower highs that we broke above and the eight day cap caught up. So yesterday, you know, we poked our head a little higher even with the bank's week. And then today we went and closed on the highs. So the headlines are gonna probably be again, you know, high is closed since uh, the financial crisis, blah, blah, blah. And now we're a, a stone throw away from, you know, 148.11 on the SPX. You know, that's that 1474 that we've been talking about a lot. So. With that said, um, you see a lot of people out there um, talking about where we're going to top. Um, we're going to go through 1474, squeeze the shorts, go to 1500. From there, we're going to fail. You know, I'm getting short now or I'll wait. You know, like why? I don't understand. You know, everyone out there, a lot of smart guys out there, are like cost averaging into shorts right now where it's really giving you no reason to do so. And it, yeah, maybe you'll eventually be right. Like maybe we do get another short squeeze through those highs. Maybe we go to 15, 15 and a quarter, which I think we could do. But why not trade the long side from, from here to then? Why not you know, use that portfolio approach? Why not match positions? Why not have six, seven longs on, add to them when they look like they're gonna break out, sell into extensions, into the extensions, in the, in the, in the, in the spiders or whatnot, short more as a hedge, manage positions. That's what's been working to sit on the sidelines and, and try and target how to short and, and try and just be bearish and try and have an opinion, you know, the market's not validating that opinion yet. Yesterday, the bank sold off and everyone's like, oh, the bank move is over. I'm like, you know what? Right now, Bank of America went to the 21 day moving average. Um, on the virtual trade floor, the radio, we talked about buying it into that you know, 1140 area. And if you sold into some of the excitement and the upgrades above 12, you had the luxury to buy 1140s and, and PS, you, know, you made some money. You, you look at Bank of America, Yes, it was somewhat harsh, okay, to the downside, but from 980-ish all the way up like we've been riding it, finally it broke here. If you sold some and took some on the 21 day, you know, you got paid here, like 2.5%. And now it almost negated that day, so I would say a little sideways action, it can continue. So for me, I was pretty light going into this area, and then once we broke, you know, tweeted about it, talked about buying some here, sold some, and now I'm back to light again, and I'm going to let it continue to go as we've been riding this trend. You know, some signs that, that um, the banks weren't over with is because even though Bank of America came off like that, uh, look at Goldman Sachs. Didn't even flinch, okay? Closing the highs of the day during that and still above the eight day. Had a nice day today and looks okay. You can't be so heavy in the banks because Wells Fargo is tomorrow morning. I would say the one thing, good thing about Wells Fargo is it's been lagging the move, so expectations aren't so high for it. And um, you know, it, it poked its head above this area, and we'll see what their earnings are tomorrow, and more importantly, how the market treats it. Okay, it, it's below the highs, so it's a little bit of a laggard. So in a way, it's decent because you know, if it was at the highs, that would mean the expectations are higher. So we'll see what kind of earnings they have. Um, I know today, I bought some GE, and I know that um, it's a little bit of a laggard play. Um, you know, look where the highs are. Uh, but at this particular point, it's a, you know you have a little bit of financials, you have a little bit of industrials. Um, it's trying to wedge right here. Um, 
I would say at this particular point, it's a good tier one. If it were to get above uh, 2023, you know, um, tomorrow, so to speak, you then have uh, a big obstacle here at 2146. All, all in all, this is like a B, you know, B play, something tight. It's lagging, so you can't be in too heavy, but it's worth a try. Um, as far as high beta land, you know, Amazon has been pretty choppy here um, in the midst of the upgrades, but overall, you look at it, it's still holding um, this breakout area. Let the eight day catch up. Google has been very choppy, but overall, still looks good. Hugging the eight day, moving higher. Baidu's been an animal. Um, from from a, a lagger type play that gave a nice red dog reversal for some to switch gears. You know, down here, everyone wants to know what a red dog reversal looks like and what it could lead to. Well, here you go. This is after a huge move. Remember this when a lot of guys got stopped out right there you know, to the downside and then you had continuation. People didn't know what the story would be here, but you didn't have to. Here was your reversal. This is where you could have covered. This is where you could have switched gears, got long at this 87.96. Okay, and then put a stop at the low of the day. And if you did that, look at the size of the move. And if you, you know, only did it as a few day trade, you know, you could have even got it into there. So lo and behold, today it's stretched. It's coming into bigger resistance. And that's how you see if money rotates somewhere at an inflection point and then measure it to see if it continues. And it did. I was definitely not active in this whole uh, time frame, but there were people who were and they got rewarded because look at this red dog reversal right there. Look at this outside day. Look at this hammer bottom. Or well, whatever you want to call it, that's what happened here after a big move to the downside. And again, you don't know if it's a major inflection point when it happens, but you can measure it along the way where you know it, it went away, held higher, and then continued to go up. And now it's stretched right back into resistance. Not a place to probably chase, but a place to probably take some off. You want to talk about Facebook? Um, been holding Facebook in the virtual trading floor probably since this area. Okay, and I think I might have been out of it a few days right in here, but then got back involved right when it looked like it was going to break out. Broke out, still small left. You know, at this point, I don't think you can initiate it. We're coming into some bigger resistance, but nice move. Remember the day of the lockup? There it was right there. What was important was that it held higher right there. That was your, you know, core entry, so to speak. You could have trimmed and trailed it along the way, let it go, you know, sideways, descending, and then go again. And now look at it. LinkedIn had a decent day today also. LinkedIn. You, know, you take a look at it. I, I know it's sloppy and not the easiest thing to, to deal with, but overall, descending channel broke above it with some work. It probably continues. You go to the weekly chart. Weekly chart looks good, right near the highs here. New issue from what two years or so, and that's what typically whether you get the biggest best uh, best in breed because they're innovative. The shares aren't outstanding, and and you know once they're under accumulation and they go, if you have a little bit of earnings behind it, you know they could turn into big winners. And right now it's on its way. You know, the next big objective here is about 122 to 125. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully they have a good report to, to help confirm the action in this chart. As far as um, the OAHs, eh, you know, it's coiling in here. It's, not, it's still a laggard group, but at least there's money still rotating, rotating there. There's some things to do. You go to the daily chart and, uh, you know, it made a little bit of a higher high, but it still has some resistance, not exactly... Uh, a barn burner type of scenario, but you know, guys who entered in the beginning of the year said, I'm going to give this a chance. You're getting rewarded. Um, you look at the home builders, see what they did today. Look at that. Eh, a little choppy, but still at highs. Um, and that's something that guys are complaining about is that the intraday action is, is choppy and, and thin. And, and with that being said, what you do is you give things a little bit more room, you trade a little less size, and you let them work out. More of a portfolio approach versus just an active, active approach. You know, today, Apple got me good. Um, I thought that it would actually hold up. I, so I tried buying some of it around 525, um, and then I got stopped out of 523. And then when it looked horrendous, I think I started shorting it around 516, 517. And then it didn't break 515, and then um, I just stayed away from it. It broke the downtrend. Um, at this point, I have no position in Apple. Um, not much you could say about it except for, I guess, uh, you know, this is major support and it just held another support level is 515 um, closed. Eh, eh, it's just, you know, it's just hard to deal with a lot of brain power here where, you know, you have a lot of unknowns. So I would just be very light here with no big bets to the downside or to the upside unless we, you know, really get above this break above this. And it's probably not going to be decided upon until we have earnings. And that's not for another week or two. So what was interesting is I, you know, I, I, I was almost on the highs of my day in my swing account where I had six, seven longs and one short in my day trading account. I overtraded and didn't do as well. But you know, that, that you know, par for the course, it happens. So with all that being said, there's a lot to like out there. 
lots of participation in lots of different groups. All you have to do is educate yourself, look for them, you know, to stay with it. You use a tier system, you add when they look great, when they're breaking out, as they extend, you trim some, but you stay with some to get the entire move. Um, you know, we extend right now, I think the oscillator is plus 35-ish, so we're not really that overbought to start really over, you know, overlapping the, the spider short. So right now I'm, uh, I'm net long. Um, I have actually a lot of longs on there, you know, but I didn't go to town shorting the spiders because I don't think we're quite there yet. And we'll see what happens tomorrow with Wells Fargo's earning. Right now, you know, it's, the tape is conducive to, to a portfolio approach, um, not that conducive to just trying to be an active trader. Um, there are spots where you get inflection points, where you get a little cash flow on top of your swing positions, but I would say don't you know, hammer yourself by over trading them, let them work out and give them some room. That's what's been, um, I think, helping traders uh, be a little less frustrated. So all in all, the, the road to 1700, which we talked about in 2013 thesis looks good. We also talked about that a year and a half ago. You know, the, the strength in the banks that we went over in Bloomberg in the fourth quarter um, has continued into this year. So we try and be early. We try and give you guys time to get in there. And then we try and teach you how to maneuver it so you're comfortable. Tonight, I'm uh, co-hosting CNBC Asia from 5 to 6, so I got to get going. If you have CNBC World Markets, tune in. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a good night. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.